we appear to be back on. So <laughs> welcome everyone. To <laughs> welcome to <laughs> this week's edition of the Construction CBA's Coffee Cafe. Um, I'm Lisa Raich. Uh, I am the founder of Bodhi Business Advisors, aka the Construction CPA. And we're dropping the hammer on cash flow problems for contractors with hands-off accounting so you can build things that matter. Today's topic, <laughs> if the internet lasts long enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be about business succession planning. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So this is actually a pretty, uh, this is actually an interesting and a fun kind of topic. Um, so typically um, what we see, what we've been seeing in the last five years or so when we, we talk about succession planning is typically um, an owner exiting. An owner exiting at, a lot of times it's at retirement. And to be honest, in the last year or two, we're, we're starting to see um, some of our younger clients who are looking to exit out of, say, their first business and looking to kind of turn it into like the next business. So um, 15, 20 years ago, when we talked about succession planning, typically it was a business owner who was going to be kind of, you know, handing the business over to a child, um, well, not, not a child, but again, one of their children. Um, that isn't happening as much as it used to. Um, we're finding that it, there's just more, more people are kind of going and doing kind of doing their own thing, going down their own path and not necessarily taking over a parent's business. So when we talk about, we're going to talk about succession planning. When we talk about it, well, it'll be more in the kind of the exit, right? Are we exiting at retirement or are we exiting to get something out of this business to kind of take it and go and do that, that next business. So um, it really is just getting you, uh, getting a plan together, um, getting you prepared for that key employee. In most cases, that owner um, who's going to leave the position and they're going to leave the position because they're retiring or they're going to go do another business. Um, so the steps that we're going to walk through are going to be, they're going to be important regardless if you're exiting when you're, 30, if you're exiting at 65, or if you're, you know, exiting and you're handing the business over to a child or you're selling it to a stranger, it's not gonna really going to matter. You're going to want to consider all of, oh, and I think we lost our technology again. Oh, maybe we didn't. <laughs> all right. This might just be a wonky one and oh, well. <laughs> so the idea is that you want to maintain continuity in your business and stability, right? If you are working with customers, your customers want to be able to, they want it to be a seamless transition. They don't want to see anything happen, even though there are things happening in the background. So when you're doing your succession planning, um, you want to keep your talent because if you are in fact selling your business to a third party, to a stranger, if you're selling a small business, right? If you're selling, if you are selling your, that, that small business the person coming in typically is going to want to take over that business and keep running with it and running the business and growing that business. They're not necessarily, when we think about secessions, we, a lot of times people think about what they see on television, right? A business is sold, uh, the pieces are stripped away, people are laid off, so on and so forth. The kind of secession planning that we're talking about is that small business. That small business is intended to continue to run after you sell it. So talent retention, if you've got key employees, if you're selling your business to someone else, they want to ensure that those key people are there when they take the keys from you and they, you know, they walk in on a Monday morning, open the doors with the lights on, are those key people going to be there? So again, you know, helping you to keep your, keep your talent, keeping um, the people, making sure they feel valued in their jobs. Um, and that, oh, well, the new owner is going to come in and everybody's going to be fired. That's not, a lot of times in a small business, that is not the case. Again, the new owner wants to kind of pick up and start running on Monday morning and keep running the business. And so we want to retain that talent. Um, you need to be clear, clear on the organizational structure, kind of who's on first, who does what. If it's unclear, that person coming in doesn't know what kind of what the SOPs are, how you operate the business. You want to have all of that mapped out. So again, that person coming in to buy wants to be able to take the keys and just get in the car and drive. They don't want to have to recreate the wheel 
once they've taken over a business and they bought it from you. Um, you know, you want to make sure that um, you, you, you want to plan for, again, some different circumstances. You want to think about things that could happen, right? You cannot, you can't think of everything, but you just want to put a plan. It's a put, you put, you're putting a plan together like you would plan anything else in your business. Like you're going to plan for the next business year. You're going to plan when you're going to exit. So things to keep, you know, to, to think about. Um, you need to create consistent business processes across the board in your entity. Why? Because you want business to continue as usual on the day after a transaction. So if all of the business lives in your head, you can't sell that to someone. No one wants to buy something that's in your head. So you need to get all of that stuff out of your head. So how do you do the day-to-day? -day? How do all of your team members do the day-to-day? -day? You want to have all of that mapped out, processes and procedures so that Again, anybody coming in can clearly understand what it is they're doing and what their role is. Um, you know, you want to explore the legal considerations. There are going to be aspects. You're not just going to sell your business on a Tuesday and, you know, you retire on Wednesday. There are going to be legal things that you want to think about, financial transitions, um, you don't sell a business without having a lawyer in tow. So you want to ensure it's not just, is that business financially viable? I'm going to buy that business. There's going to be some legal things that you're going to want to think about. Um, you know, what, is there something changing in the structure of the business when it's being sold? So again, all considerations, there'll be a legal aspect of your business. There'll be kind of that financial, that accounting aspect of it. So, you know, you want to make sure just like anything else that legally it's a smooth transition from one owner to the next because your customers don't want to notice anything different from one owner to the other. They don't, you don't want them to realize the business was sold because nothing on their side really should change. You also want to make sure that you communicate your secession plan with, you know, your key stakeholders. So it's important that you have the conversation and that your team understands what you're doing. While you don't have to tell your team everything, it's important to be as transparent as possible because in a situation like that, especially in a small business, if you aren't clear as to what is happening, your team are now telling themselves the story of what's going on. And their story may not, in most cases, it's nowhere near exactly what's going on. So they're making things up in their head as to what's going to happen. They're talking amongst each other. Everybody's concerned. Then you have issues where people now are exiting your business. Possibly key employees that you've had for a long time are now scared. They're nervous. They don't know if they're going to have a job on the other side. So now you're not only trying to plan your exit, but you're trying to kind of, you know, uh, bail out the the boat with a teaspoon, especially if people are kind of exiting and, and bailing on you at the same time. So you want to be clear. Oh, I think, no. All right, we're going to keep going. I don't know the, I keep getting flashes that I have no connection. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, so you, you want to be clear with your team members. You don't necessarily need to let, um, you know, your, um, customers know at this point, but maybe, you know, as you're, as you're building your plan, you don't necessarily need to let everybody know, but as you are engaging the plan, as you are rolling out the various pieces of that plan to exit, you know, things like you might want to, um, if you have key vendors that you work with, right. You want them to understand that, you know, the business isn't, is only changing ownership. It's going to continue and so forth and so on and so forth. So again, you want to be as transparent with people as possible, again, without telling someone all the details of the transaction, because there are privacy issues, of course, but you want to make sure that everyone understands what's going on, when things are going to happen, why they're happening, so on and so forth. So again, if you leave people to their own devices, they're going to make up their own stories. So they're going to fill in the blanks, you know. And it's probably not going to be anywhere near what the reality is. So be transparent with people, but you have to have a plan in order to be transparent with people about what your plans are. Um, you know, there are going to, you're going to want to assess your team members as well. 
um, as you're doing this, because if someone's coming in and purchasing a business, they're going to want to see structurally what you have, what you have for team, who's doing what, um, what are your SOPs, um, who are your main customers, um, do you have concentration of customers, right? These are all things that a buyer is going to be looking at. So they're all these are items that you're going to want to be prepared to bring to the table. Again, like anything else, you're not just going to decide you sell your business on a Monday, it's sold on a Tuesday, and you retire on Wednesday. There's a lot of background that goes into developing out what you need to do to make sure that you have everything teed up and in place, and you've you've got the financial information to be able to actually sell your business. Uh, a buyer is going to want to understand financially what's going on, um, how your how your what your internal structure is, your internal organization, what how you're, you know, are you top heavy, management heavy, and so on and so forth. These are all things that they're going to want to understand. So you're going to need to have all of this mapped out. And I say on paper, again, it doesn't have to be, you know, on paper. Again, you would have it in, in your files, but you want it to be accessible to that buyer. And so they can understand exactly what it is that they're buying. Um, some of the challenges with the planning is, is people just pro procrastinating. They don't bother to put anything together. And then somewhere along the line, they make a decision. I think I'm going to retire. And it, it doesn't just happen like that. So there really needs to be planning that goes into it. The more you procrastinate, the more you may have that challenge selling your business, or you may not get the price that you want for it. So again, don't wait till the last minute to make the decision. Even if you're thinking about it and it might not be for five years, you want to build out that plan and start building it out now because there are things that you're like anything else in your business. You need to lay the foundation for being able to exit properly like you would building a foundation for what you want to do in your business next year. There will be things that you'll need to do to kind of plan and prep for that secession, for that exit that you don't just decide, you know, it's, it's year end, I'm going to sell and I'm going to be retired effective January 1 doesn't happen like that. Um, lack of communication and secrecy, again, like anything else, the more you keep to yourself, the more you keep to, you know, keep close to the vest. People make up their make up stories um, around what they think is happening, which is probably not what's happening. So be as clear and as transparent as possible. Um, many people lack a strategy. They haven't even thought about it. it again, you don't make a decision on a Monday and on Friday, your business is sold. There's a lot that goes into it. So you have to put a plan and a strategy as to how you're going to do this. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, a lot of clients don't do evaluation or don't have an idea of valuation of their business before they exit. So if you need to exit and you need to exit because you're going to roll that into another entity and you need X amount of dollars, you need to know what the value of your business is. On the other side of it, if you're exiting and you're retiring, what do you need to get out of that business to be able to retire comfortably and do the things that you want to do in retirement? So again, you want to think about doing evaluation, especially if you're thinking about selling. If you're thinking about exiting in the next three, five years, you know what? What is my business worth today? Because if it's not worth what you think it is, or you need it to be in three or five years when you make that exit, you now have three or five years to build it up to the point where you need it to be. I need it to be X. I need it to be, I need to sell my business for $10 million because I need that to roll into the next endeavor that I'm going to do. Well, if your business, if you don't know your business is not worth 10 million and you go to sell, that's a very hard pill to swallow. So Again, part of your overall strategy and your planning for that secession, do evaluation. What is your business worth? Are you going to get out of it what you need on the other side? And if you have a plan, which most people do not, it's probably old and outdated and things have changed in your business. So you need to go back and revisit that plan and make adjustments to it like anything else you would in your life. Like when you're doing your personal financial planning, your long-term life planning, you don't make a plan today and then 20 years from now, that's still the same plan. It's the same thing with clients. You know, we've, we, we're not attorneys, but we do recommend that they revisit their wills regularly. 
Why? Because things in their lives have changed. So you may have that plan, revisit that plan, adjust that plan and adjust it for what's going on in your business at this point in time. And again, you have the ability to mitigate any challenges that you, that may have come up in the interim so that again, it's not a completely uphill battle. You can make adjustments and then make a shift to the left or the right to help you get and help you achieve the result that you're looking to, what you need to exit out of this business. Um, you know, one of the things that we run into a lot of times too is um, there may be more than just like one or two stakeholders involved. It's it's not just you are responsible for you. There are other things going on in your business. So it's important, again, to continue to communicate. You have to continue to communicate this and kind of through the whole process. It's not, again, secret. You don't want to, the, the secrecy, people are making up stories. Years ago, I worked in a business. We were sold to another entity. I was in finance. I knew we were being sold. The other team members knew something was going on and then the stories began to circulate. And now suddenly people are looking and they're leaving and so on. So again, communicate who are the stakeholders, who is important in your business um, for them. You, you want to make sure that you, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're clear with them. Um, and again, transparency is going to help you build trust through the transition um, it's not just your team or your stakeholders trusting you. It's being able to trust that next person. So again, that keeps, it helps to keep that consistency that the next person needs. Again, if everything lives here in your brain or it lives with two of your key employees that you haven't told what you're doing and now they've gone off and they've left your business and they've left you hanging with all of your business in your brain and all kinds of history and day-to-day -day operations and team members that have left your business, you've now crippled and it made it much harder for that next person to want to come in and take over your business because no one wants to take over um, something and have to recreate the wheel and do it all themselves. So again, if I can, you need to make sure you build out that plan. What's going to be the strategy for exit? You want to have your processes and your procedures all documented in your business so that that next person can come in, walk in on that Monday, flip the lights on, read the SOP and be able to do the tasks that you might've been doing or you might've been directing, but now they can do those tasks. And the last is make sure you communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, don't, you need to be transparent. Do not keep everything secret. You know, the secrecy people begin to tell themselves their own stories and it never benefits anyone. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, you know, we'll, you know, revisit and we'll answer any questions that you may have. We love hearing from you. Thank you very much for following us along, especially today with all of our technological challenges. Um, please come back and join us every Friday at 10 a.m. for our Construction CPA Coffee Cafe. And if you love today's cafe, please Hashtag coffee break in the comments. And again, we're dropping the hammer on cash flow problems so you can build things, things that matter. <laughs> Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next week.